Enhance your Excel skills with the Choose Calls and Choose Rows functions, which could become essential for organizing your data. Excel is more than just a grid of cells. It's a powerful platform for data analysis and visualization. By learning how to use Choose Calls and Choose Rows, you can refine how you extract and display information, making your spreadsheets more dynamic and informative. These functions give you the flexibility to plot exactly the data you need without the hassle of manual adjustments. Let's take a look at a few examples on how you can use these functions and I'll throw in a bonus tip that will make it worth the effort. I'm going to go through three examples of the choose column and choose rows function. And the first example, I'm just going to go through how this function is used. So choose function and choose columns are new Microsoft 365 features. So let's try the choose columns. So I'll type choose and I'll select choose columns here. And you see a tooltip come up and, and basically it's going to give you the arguments that we need to put in there. And there's at most two arguments. First, the array, which is my selection here. And the next one is the column number. So the column number, it starts from left to right here. Uh, a is column one, B is column two, etc. And if I only want the name and department, it would be column B and C, which would be the second and third columns. So it'd be number two, comma, number three, close parentheses, presenter, and you can see that it has populated those informations for me. So that's the basic use of choose calls. And choose rows is similar. But let's go to our second example of a use case of how we can use choose calls. So in this use case, you may get a table from someone and you're working in a team and maybe you don't like the way that the column is set up. You want to move things around, but you don't want to mess it up. Well, choose columns is a good way to test out how columns would look. I'm going to give some extra space here to make it easier. And I'm going to add some rows, control shift plus plus. So it's going to add some rows here. And just to make it easier, I'm going to type one, tab two, tab, and just copy that over. So click the fill handle here and just drag it across here. So it's gonna increment the numbering here, right? So column one, column two, column three. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna test out our different ways of resetting the columns. So type choose columns, choose calls, press tab, and here's my array, select my array here. So here I can select how I want the different columns to, to show up. Maybe I want name to show up first, I'll press, press two here, and then ID, press one here, and then four for the years of service and department maybe later and last the city and state close parentheses press enter so as you can see now we've placed the columns in different places and it can test out how we want to have them viewed without messing up the original table and if we didn't like that we want the department to show up last go back up here and department was number three i'll go to the department here delete that and just put go to the end at six and just put in three and you can see that it's changed already. So that's a good way to rearrange columns. Let's go to a third use case for choose columns. Let's say for example here, what we wanna do is we want to filter for something. Maybe you wanna filter for the service years and we wanna show this table, but for the service years that are under a certain amount. And this involves using the choose columns with other functions. And this might be helpful in dashboard situations where you want some interactivity. So let's see how we can do this. I'm gonna set this up with some parameters and I'll explain why we use them later on. So let's put name here and we'll put ID, put department, make sure these are spelled out the exact same way that you have them up here. Here I'll put a place where we can enter some information, years, enter years, and just to highlight this a little bit more, let's make it, give it some borders and some shading. So give it a border and then maybe give it some shading so we know that this is an input area. Oops, didn't want that one to do it. So I'll clear that, clear the formatting there uh, and make it here, make it a, make that a grid again. Oh, let's put years. No, oh, abbreviate that, years. Okay. So this is an example where, you know, hey, let's make a nice pretty dashboard for people and let them, let them interact a little bit. So what we can do is we need to like filter out stuff first. And so to filter things, there is a function called filter. So we can do filter F I, and that's the first one there. So I'll press tab. And what we want to filter, we're going to filter out from this array, comma. And what do we want to include? Well, we want to include anything in the years of service, right? That maybe let's, let's make this easy. Let's make it like it's if it's less than uh, 10 years, right? Less than 10 years less than 10 years, right? So close that, press enter. You can see that it's filtered out anything that's less than 10 years. Now, if I wanna make this a little bit more dynamic, I'm gonna take that and reference, delete that and reference this cell. So I can just enter in information. So right now it's blank, but if I put in 10, you can see that it put back that table result. Oh wait, there's no headers. And so for some instances of Excel, I've seen it where the headers come with it after you do the filter function. But in this instance of Excel, it seems like it didn't do that. But what we can do is use another function called, you can either type it in 
uh, manually up here, or use a function called vStack. And basically what it's gonna do, is gonna take an array and just stack it vert vertically. Select my array here, which is only the first row here. This is the header row, so it's gonna stack this vertically. We could just copy and paste it in if we think about it, but this is a nice way to make it more dynamic. If, if God forbid, something in the title changes, instead of department, maybe it's called DPT. So it just makes it a little bit more dynamic. So I'm gonna press comma, gotta close off the parentheses here and press enter. And now you can see that I've got my headers here. So now I've got my full table here that have people that are less than 10 years, that have data service less than 10 years. But let's say for example, I don't want the full table. I want just a couple columns. I just want the name, ID and department. And that's where a choose calls comes into it. And we also have another function we have to add to it. So I'm gonna do, go here. Here I'm gonna do choose calls, type choose calls, choose columns, open parentheses. This is the array that I want. But out of this array, what I wanna do is I just wanna, I just wanna have name, ID, and department. So this is where we have our column numbers come into play because now it's selecting the array, which is this. I just want to have it pick out name, ID, and department. We can hard code it in, which be name, ID, and department, which is two, one, and three, close parentheses, enter. And it gives us that, but, but what if we still have those pesky coworkers and we want to see the different columns um, and we want to maybe change columns and just see how it looks. And maybe we'll have ID switch up first and, and whatnot and not have to put numbers in. And that's where these three cells come in. It's just kind of a neat little thing we can do. And what we can do is we do want to use a match function. So have match, tab, what's our lookup value? Well, it's these three, have them look up that value. And what's our lookup array? Well, it's this row, first row here, right? So this is A1 to F1, and it's gonna match name to name here, which will bring back the number two, ID to ID here, brings back the number one. And, and what is that? That's the column number, right? So I'm gonna do comma, and I want an exact match. So I'll just type zero, close parentheses, uh, close another parentheses to close off the choose calls, press enter. And now you see we've done that there. Let's say I didn't want department, I want it years first. I'm gonna take that, just control C to copy, and then go to department, control V to paste, and you can see it's gonna show up here now. Control V to paste, press enter, and now I've got years of service, and that's selected there. If I didn't want 10 years, maybe I wanted less than 10 years, put eight, press enter, now you can see it's gone lower. Now, of course, it's a little bit more complicated when you look at this formula, but hey, this is something that may be a little handy if you wanna put this into a dashboard and give some interactivity with a table. Let's go to choose row. So choose row is very similar to choose columns, but with the rows. So let's give an example. Let's say for example, I got a table and I get a table all the time. And I just want to see first to last table. Let's just make it easy. I put first here, first, first, and then last. So I'll put my row function here, choose row function here. I do choose row, art, press tab. My array is this array, comma, the row number. Well, I want to, I want the row number one because that's the header. So I'll put that there. So row number one is gonna be my first column. I need to bring my headers in, comma. Row number two is gonna be the first one. So that's gonna be number two, which is the one where Eva is. So how do I get the last one? Well, it's gonna be a negative number. So it's gonna count from the bottom. So what you can do is put minus one. So it'll count from the bottom. It'll be the last one. Close parentheses, press enter. And you can see I have my first and my last records or rows here in this table, this array. So that's a use case for that. So what's another use case? Well, let's say for example, another use case is that maybe we, we have a list of people here and someone won a prize, but we wanna make it random. So how do we do that? Well, we can use a the choose rows with another function called random. So I'm gonna type in choose row, choose R, press tab. And here's my array again. And I'm gonna select first, first row, which is the header row. And I'm gonna use a function called random, random between press tab, and the bottom is number two, right? It's gonna be the second row. And what's the numbers between? It'll be between number two, the second record or second row, and the last one. So the last one, how do we figure out what the last one is? Maybe this changes a lot. We can always say it's number 21 because it's there, but we'll say for example, we add to this and we wanna have it automatically count. What we can do is have an automatic counter and that's using the count A function. It's gonna count any range that's not empty. I'm gonna press tab to open up that parentheses. Just select column A here, because that's gonna probably tell us something here. And what it basically does is count the number of rows that have values in it. And so you can see it's gonna bring us back 21. If I close parentheses over there, and I just kind of select this, and this is only available in uh, M365, you can see that it count, it brings back a little tip here. It says 21. 
it's a dynamic evaluator of the formula. This is kind of a neat thing that has come out recently. So it will count from 2 to 21. It'll, be a it'll give you a random number. So I need to close out the parentheses here. And let's see, choose rows. Yep, yep it stopped there. Press uh, another parentheses. Microsoft was nice enough to do that for me. Click yes. And now it has randomly selected somebody. So if I press the delete key, this is kind of, the random function is something that um, if you do any activity in the sheet, it's going to recalculate it. So I've pressed delete a couple times. You can see that it has recalculated. And that's how you do a random name generator for people. Maybe they want a prize or something like that. So let's go to our next example or use case of choose rows. Let's say we want to search for employee ID. Let's, let's again think, oh, this is a dashboard and we want to search for employee ID. And we want to bring back a record of the employee that we searched for. So let's say I just put employee ID here, make it a little bit more pretty so we can view that. Let's just make that cell different color. So here I'm going to put in the choose rows function, choose row, press tab, my array. Here's my array here. And the first row is always going to be the header row, type one there. And then what I'm going to do here, I need to match. I can back to our little match function, type in match. What I want to look up, I want to look up this value here. And what I want to match it to, I want to match it to this row, this, this set of rows. I'll select that. And it's going to be an exact match. So that's going to be zero. Close parentheses, close parentheses, press enter. Nothing here. That's because I haven't put in an employee ID. Let's say, for example, I want employee 10. That's going to be David. Well, if I know another employee number 16, who's that going to be? Well, that's going to be Nor. So this is a way that you can also use this type of functionality, put onto a dashboard, and create some kind of interactivity. Using the choose calls and choose rows function in Excel can enhance your data management and dashboarding skills. These functions are perfect for making your spreadsheets more cleaner and more organized. Keep practicing incorporating them in your daily tasks and soon you'll notice substantial improvements in your productivity. If you found this video helpful, please subscribe and stay tuned for more Excel Insights.